Yo, 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 yo. Nakama Worldwide, welcome back to Conqueror's Hockey Corner. It's your boy Brooklyn. What's happening? It's your boy Vim. Yeah. And it's your boy Serge. And if you can't tell, it just got serious. It did. Ooh. It went down. We're here to bring you our review to One Piece Manga Chapter 925 The Blank. The Blank. But before we continue, what do they need to do, guys? Smash that subscribe button if you haven't already. Smash it. If you've been following us for a little while and you haven't done that, bit cheeky, just tap it, you know, it helps us out quite a bit. Like the video, because you like the chapter. There's no other way to go about it. Man, share the video if you can. Thank you to all the viewers. Thank you everyone who joins us weekly. Thank you very much. Also, we'll be making another video to allow you to know that there's going to be a little competition running. So stay tuned, check it out. Check out for the rules. We're giving away stuff to celebrate us finally having over 100 subscribers. Yep. We love you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, very, you much. very much. But without further ado, let's get into let's it. Let's get into it. Yeah. So just off the top, we have all at once seen all three calamities, all three all stars. Jeez. Madness. And as we thought, Jack looks like he's the weakest of the three. Yep. Crazy. But that's going to come at the back end of this review. So stay tuned in. So yeah, let's take it from the top. Go. So we have the front cover. All that there is to say is clearly there's something going on between Perona <laughs> and My Hawk. Now, there, I'm not trying to say like I know everything. A little bit of sangria, a little bit of wine. Listen, alcohol, man, woman. She's dressed the way she's dressed. This is a front she, cover page request, She's guys. looking. <laughs> and older has obliged. And older has obliged. Older has obliged. You got, another, you got a bunch of black cats. Another word for cat is what? <laughs> <laughs> They were there to get the people oh. drunk, get the party popping. Hey, like, the annotations are here. Listen. Let's go. Fire, fire, nice creative front cover. Appreciate every single time. What Oda does magnificently here is, wow, before we even get into Act 2, we go to different parts of the world to build the entire One Piece world. So first we are in the Muggy Kingdom with My Hawk and Perona. Wow. Do you know what's brilliant about this is we're starting to set the tone of different perspectives and the One Piece universe kind of doesn't stop just because we're in Wayne. And so much things are happening that we need to be informed of and Oda does it so brilliantly and executes it in such a brilliant way where we learn. But what I do wish, and I will say this now, is sometimes we need to see some of the stuff he tells us about. Well, he, he teases us, man. He teases us like, too much, man. He's letting us know what's been going on in the world. There's things that we've been questioning. He's just teasing us with it. That's why it's such a good story to read and it draws you in. But Gekko Moria is alive. Yes, yeah. he is. Announced by My Hawk and we'll see later on in this chapter. Which obviously tells Perona. There's a little bit of bats between Perona and My Hawk. Why didn't you tell me? They start arguing who cook more. Hey, why are you living hey, here? Hey, She's now leaving. Hey. All of a sudden he gets nice to her. It's, it's, and then he gets serious. It's like a romantic episode right there. <laughs> and then he gets serious, Brooklyn. Yeah. And he tells her what? He said, maybe it's best that you go. Yeah. Well, why do you think that is? There was a meeting at the Reverie. Something came up that was interesting. What do you think that is? Well, we all know what it is. Let's just spell it out. We did, Remember Fujitora was in Abolish the Shishibuka system. Taking them all out. So maybe it's a it's like a tease as a possibility that that went through. And he's letting her know it's not safe to be around him anymore. He's a, he's a wanted man now. He's not escaped anyone. He's basically, government's going to be for him on a wanted Pro, list again. But Perona lacks a bad boy. <laughs> now, what's interesting is, if Perona's going to Moria, and if Moria's in trouble with the Blackbeard pirates, does My Hawk go to back her? Ooh. And we see some clash between Shiliu and My Hawk? Because I've always mm -hmm. had this theory. I'm going to get into a bit further, because I was sidetracked a little bit. My, period, my theory was half true, half wrong. But one thing at a time. We're in the new world on the Pirate Island Beehive, which seems to be the island of the Blackbeard Pirates. Oh, pirates yeah. Moria's invading and Moria is trying to find out where is Teach. So he's killed off a bunch of the people, raised zombies to attack him, yeah? What's interesting though is that what happened with the, the whole scenario with him and um, the Flamingo? Yeah. Well, that's a lot of unanswered questions there. That is. Why did he let him go when he said he wouldn't? Did he let him go? Did he let, oh. did he let him go? Well, maybe we underestimated Moria. Maybe, maybe you know, are. Well, maybe there's some interesting ability with the fact to, that he To be didn't... fair, we are underestimating him because Luffy had a lot of help to find Moria. He had all the shadows coming inside of him for him to be able to execute our plan perfectly. Yeah. He wouldn't have been able to Plot do armor. that. A lot. A lot of armor. Armor. So, Moria ain't that weak. It's just sounds like fights. 
<laughs> Stars make fights, make fights. Man. Momora is looking for his boy Absalom, who apparently wandered into their territory a few days ago, and it's interesting. So Absalom, appe- Absalom appears to show up in front of Moria. They start talking, and Moria just highlights something that we thought was going on for sure. While all the other Yonko have their territory, Blackbeard is getting stronger. The Blackbeard pirates are notorious as ability hunters. And this was perfectly shown as well when we were in dress rolls up, when the wrestling man, forgive me, I forgot his name. No, the one with the um, elbow move. Guys. Oh god, no man, the one that fought that the Sabo smashed him up, man. Sabo he was in the tournament. Dirty, man. Oh, oh it's okay. embarrassing, man. Oh, he's such and a he got man. and he got beaten up and he was ended up on Revolutionary Island. Yeah, man. <laughs> Flip. He was one of Blackbeard's original members. You know what, guys? Apologies. Apologies. Straighten us out in the comments below. I can't believe we forgot. You know, but he's an irrelevant factor. That's why I forgot. <laughs> we don't his even name. Like he's it, gonna man. kill us. Do you know what, man? Stay with me. This is embarrassing. Do it. It's embarrassing, man. So he was already on his way to hunt for the abilities. He yeah. wanted Ace's fruit. He wanted Luffy's fruit just be- for the sake of getting it. In effect, they they won't necessarily want to eat it themselves, but to have the fruit as a collusion and be as a part of their, their team, they can just say, oh, we've got all the fruits. We can hand it out to necessary people. Similar to Kaido trying yeah. to build his own yeah. devil fruit army. But the difference is Kaido don't care if it's fake fruit or not. Pause. Jesus Burgess, man. Jesus Burgess. Ah. I can't yeah. believe I forgot his Burgess. name. Burgess! This is a blasphemous name, like, that's probably hey. why. You gotta keep uh, it Christian, man. It's good. Anyway, so what we end up transpiring is Gekko Moria thinks he's talking to Absalom and then he gets cut up. This is one thing though that's very interesting about Gekko Moria's character. I see, then that means I've done a terrible thing to these people. I've never, I've never seen him go against himself like in terms of moral, so... Well, he thought Absalom was in trouble. Yeah. When he thought that Absalom was in good care, he thought oh, Absalom was partying up. Well, maybe I didn't need to kill them. That's that's as far as yeah, I can the, way it's, the way it's phrased, though, I think. God, yeah, I've done a terrible thing to these people. So it's, it's like yeah. he felt his remorse. We can't see in his it face. Could, it could be, yeah, could yeah, be, yeah, trans- it could be translation. Yeah, but, it could be. Yeah, maybe to reach. But. He gets sliced there we go. by Shinyu of the rain, who has taken Absalom's ability. He is now the user of the clear, clear fruit. Now, two things of themselves. One thing that's interesting, I always presumed, I knew that the Blackbeard Pirates were ability hunters from when they stole the Yami Yami no Mi. Yep. They stole the Quick Quick Fruit. Yep. Gura Gura no Mi. And I was always this concept of they're going to strengthen themselves with necessary devil fruits. We knew that when Jesus Burgess was looking for the Fire Fire no Mi, Merry Merry no Mi, the Aces Fruit. I always suspected that Shuri of the Rain would get the Diamond Fruit from Diamond Josu. But he's got the Clear Clear Fruit. And obviously, as we know that he's going to be a final one of the final opponents for Zoro. What a battle to beat the swordsman you can't see. But this is the funny thing now. Observational Haki has to be on the key. He'll close his eyes. Zoro will take both his eyes out and say, I'll fight you like this. But as long as he can sense your aura and your bloodlust, he's got you. Crazy. And we go further and we realize that Absalom was not Absalom, that in fact it <laughs> was Katarina Devon, a mythical dog dog fruit zone user, the QB, the nine tails. Nine tails. Wow. Very interesting fruit to have, to be honest. Mythical yeah. zone, man. Like, they are getting some strong fruits. Oh, they're definitely getting some. And she's a strong person to have on the team. She fought out of her way to imp- of Impo down. Yeah, she was on level six. Yeah. And she got, she just got rude, man. She was like, oh, you like corpses. I can give you the corpse of your friend. <laughs> She's like, savage. Wow. She's a savage. Wow, that's rude, man. She's a savage. <laughs> Gun talk. So Mori is there calling Blackbeard to come out. Blackbeard's not, he's not even worth my time. He just told him like, bro, if you want to be here, have fun. Come under my flag. Blackbeard's on a song called status at the moment. He's will Moria king. come under his flag? Or will they kill him and take his fruit? Do they have a need for that ability? That would be interesting. Or do they just beat him and submit him? Now, may I add one thing. Yonko life has been good to Blackbeard. <laughs> his garments have cleaned up. His beard looks clean. He's got a bunch of women sitting all around him drinking with him, yeah? He's looking sharp. It's the first time we've seen an official bounty of a Yonko. I'm going to presume it's the smallest one because he's the newest Yonko, but I could be wrong. You never know. He's a dangerous guy. But it's 2,247,600,000 berry. I thought it would be higher, personally. Yeah. That's far too close to Sweet Commanders and all that stuff. How much havoc he's really creating? Yeah, he's been rolling kind of quiet. He hasn't really got much territory. Very interesting. But he lets us know what's going on. The worst we've heard of him, he's taken over Whitebeard's spots and he's beating up the Whitebeard pirates. Aside from that, the noise he hasn't really had create too much trouble for the normal type. Revolutionaries invaded a reverie to rescue Kuma. And the wording here in the translation, now it depends on how accurate it is, in order to rescue Kuma. So it's not try, so it was their goal. Yeah, the Revolutionary Army commanders finally clashed with Marine Admirals Ryogoku and Fujitora. 
And you can see in the shadow silhouette, this is all the teasing us, man. Yeah. You know, you can see, see Sabo, my crow crow guy, the one that blends with the walls. And what did the other guy do? The, the scientific cat. They went at it. This is crazy though, because this is the kind of fights we want to see. This is the stuff that you will make good for a chapter. But again, what he did with the Revolutionary Army Clash before, previously with um, Blackbeard and the Marines, he just told us that that's what happened. Another shout out to Blackbeard. His entry into the panel, he did a quick, quick, man, his swag is on point. And then he lets us know that he's now aware of what's going on with the rest of the world. He goes, you got all these brats gathering in Kaido's place. Place. Luffy's making noise away now with the enraged emperor big mum in hot pursuit so she's apparently on the way there but remember that was in the news and his face is just like what do you think will happen it's already started the bloodbath between the powerful and the fight for the throne is he gonna make his way there afterwards guys or is he gonna wait for the bloodbath to just continue until he just jumps in but that's what he does man yeah. he just waits on that's the side, our guys. prediction anyway man but there's a lot going on in Wayno you guys go you gotta stay tuned the power of, of a Yonko, never underestimate what they know and never underestimate what they hear. So the fact that he knows so much means he's going to keep a close eye to everything that's going on until he needs to jump in. 100%. And now finally... Woo! Act now, 2. Well, act 2 of Wayno. Yeah. Brooklyn, what did you think of the clash between Inorashi and Ashura Doji shooting Maru? Well, it's interesting to see, to find, to think about why were they clashing initially. They're fighting, it seems like they're on par with each other here. Yeah? Carrot said it. Yeah. Carrot said they are on equal terms. We don't know if anyone's holding back here, but we assume that they are both, they're both going at it. Chopper's here with Tama doing his doctor business. Well done. Tama's worried about Luffy, and we have learned that Rizo, who said he is a ninja, he's going to lead the prison break. We're going to have a prison break episode going on. So you've already said it, but again, I don't think it's going to happen straight away. And I'm in agreement with yourself. They're going to wait till closer to the time when it's necessary. So for the time being, it's going to be, let them be tortured, let them stay in there. Let them gain allies. Let them gain allies, let them figure out, do a little bit of self-reflection about how weak they are and how strong they can be, and then go from there. 100% man, mm -hmm. and, and we just kind of finish off with Ashura Doji saying, I'm not going to help you guys. I only ever followed Odin. I never pledged allegiance to the Kazuki family. That was cold And though. there's a lot of focus there. Now, now what's very interesting, I think the person, so Kinemon says that he's going to win over his sword to help, but there's a lot of focus, isn't that right, Momonosuke? It has to be Momonosuke to win him over, in my opinion. Because he said to him directly, I don't remember, please, pledging my allegiance to you so it's sort of your dad's okay with me everyone else i don't care for but they have to shake the reputation as deserters because they look at them as you guys abandoned us for 20 years and left a blank, a blank. period so will we learn about the blank will we learn about what went down this is crazy they they could they lived that 20 years so yep. for them that was torturous yep. that was uh, living in hell these people just came because of the time skip through and now they all they have to do is fall back into line and go back into getting back things back into place so they're having had to go through the hardships. So of course there's going to be grudges and chips on their shoulder. Crazy. Crazy. Well, great world building, great going forward. And we finish this chapter strong. Ah. We go to Ueno country Onigashima, which is Kaido's little section. And Jack is so sub. He's telling them the problems that, you know, taxes are being bad ever since Doflamingo has gone. And he's getting brushed. So we now officially have met all of the calamities. We have Jack the Drought, Queen the Plague, King the Wildfire. So clearly, in the names, it's a value of the card system. Yes. And you could assume the king is the strongest, King the Wildfire, a swordsman. Queen looks like an Okama of some kind. They're both torturous individuals that torture people to submit to the beast pirates. And just because of the mechanical abilities, could be a swordsman as well, but that's just crazy. And obviously, Zach, um, Jack, not Zach, Jack uses the two Ziffs, Sifs or whatever um, they are. Sifs, I think. They are. And it's crazy because they mug him, Jack the drag down. And then they even disrespect each other. So there's clearly a scaling system. So if we think about it in terms of a card system, Kaido's the king of kings or whatever he is, Maybe the ace. Could be. Joko was the wild card. He's out of the picture. Yeah. You got the king, queen, and the jack, literally. X. 10 x straight possibly okay. more than likely and then everything below so then you have your headliners and numbers and, and the numbers like, and stuff yep, like that yep yep this is where it gets interesting because do flamingo had not a card system but he had heart diamond clubs and spade as a symbol whereas Hydro is actually taking literal king queen Joker 10. So there's a there's comparable, obviously, trying to figure out how they run their team like that. And obviously, when we were in Big Mom's Island, as you mentioned previously, chess pieces. Chess pieces. I'm not even worried about the structure, not to say that it's not important. What I want to know 
is who fights who. I'm ah. just going to say it right now. Because I'm a Zoro fanboy. King the Wildfire, that sword. Sorry, I want to see Zoro beat that ass. Queen the Plague, all that mechanical gear. Eustace Kid. Jack the Drought. Let's see who. Let's see, yeah. Man. This is the, the other thing is, is that part of Kid's arm? Do you think he's been That's extracting that, torturing him? It looks similar we'll have to go back in the previous chat to see if there's any kind of imagery of kids other arm was it lost again but it's just crazy there's so many potential fights you've got the nine samurai you've got three calamities you've got it's going to be a card system and i think they're going to work their way through the card system because yeah. the thing is i i don't see maybe luffy does take a calamity maybe he beats okay. jack and goes on to on to kaido but in all these big war types someone he can't have it all if he's facing kaido He's not facing him alone. There you go. But if he faces Kylo, he faces them with Kid and Lu. Well, we're still kind of leaving out the free, the free swordsman, because Reza said he's gonna, he's gonna go about and do something. Do you know what? The free swordsman could fight the free calamities, yeah. especially considering how Ashura Doji held his own against Jack. Yeah. I mean, I personally want to see Zoro do it. Zoro could be fighting Orochi as well. They could fight a couple people. There's, there's so many players on the table. So many. Because think about it. In Orochi held his own against Jack. So all these people were already doing okay. And you know Roshi and the Ming Pirate, Red Moon, Blue Moon, whatever when it sorry, Red Moon. I didn't mean like that, but Sula Foam. Sula Sula Foam. Oh yeah. Crazy. The They're well. gonna gain more allies. We know there's gonna more gain allies. more allies. It's gonna be allies in that prison. Yeah. Um Marco the Phoenix said he wouldn't come but someone might come. Yeah. Who else might appear? Edward well, Weeble. We, and we've got the guest of Potentially meeting a Goldie Roger Pirate on this island. Potentially yeah. a lurking legend. A lurking legend. To. It's crazy. But guys, this was a wild chapter. Very Basically, good. we can see that we're expecting a lot of good things. Let us know what you think down in the comment section below. Yep. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and hit the Smash. notification button so that you're reminded when we're there. If you haven't already liked the, like the video, it helps us grow. And the reason why it's important for us to grow is we can give back. We always said once we hit our first 100 subscribers, we want to say thank you. So please tune in to another video that will be dropped with further details on how to give away prizes. We've got free goodie bags for free lucky winners. So let us know what you think. But thank you from Conqueror's Haki Corner. Until next time, it's a what? Temporarily. Peace, Peace out.